is that day. Time for the PRL install. And I didn't watch any videos. I've never done this before. This is the first go around. But uh, if you guys can do it, I guarantee I can do it. So let's dig into this. First things first, it's all bagged up. Let's get all this out onto a tray. Let's get this out onto a tray. Nice and cute. Nice. So I'm looking at this and right off the bat, it's, it's pretty obvious. You got four holes here, four holes here. You got four holes on this. Gives you four machine screws. So obviously these all fit together as a unit. Which I'm assuming that we can go ahead and just put together. So I'm going to do that now. All right, to gain access inside to put all of this together, you need to take this side cover off, which all of these bolts are loose. Um, they're all Allen. I don't have an Allen small enough that I can fit in my tool. But a T15, as long as you don't go crazy and strip them out, will work just fine to get just buzz all these out real quick. All right, you got your screws out. I'm just going to pop that bad boy out. All right, first thing you're going to do is grab this ring and insert the bigger end into the back of your filter and then tighten the clamp. So if you've lost all your 10 mil sockets, don't worry. The big clamp is an eight and the rest are all sevens. All right, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you clock your MAF housing correctly. That's pretty damn simple. So basically not really. Your box is gonna sit in like this with the PRL up. Your MAF sensor is right there. So you want this to line up so it goes in the same spot. So you just kind of eyeball it and then so pretty much your math opening is going to be facing the PRL. It's pretty easy. All right. So one thing I noticed looks like this ring here, you can actually, you either way it'll work. So it's easier to get the filter in here if you have not screwed this to it yet. But I found a way, the way it's sitting in this orientation, it just pushed right in. So it's a lot easier to get this clamp on out of the container than it's going to be to get it in here and to get it like straight and nice all the way around. So put that on first and just. All right, so now you're just gonna put it in here, line up your holes. Then you're gonna grab your math, index it the correct way, line your holes up, and then run the screw through the math, through the box, through the filter housing and then tighten that together, which needs three hands, so I'm putting you down. All right, got it all together. Now you just want to go to pound town with all these. No, gently. All right, so that's what it looks like once you get it bolted in there. Now you're gonna have an option. Now you could either leave this cover off and get more sound, or you could leave it on and get colder air and more performance. Now, the only reason I know that is because on the 2.0 Accord, that's the way that PRL system was set up. And I'm going to assume this one is the same way. And for this one, I'm actually gonna put the cover on because it's, it's gonna be noisy enough, unlike the Accord, which was not at all. All right, I got this back on, everything tight. I almost feel like for what you pay and how fancy the PRL is that they should give you two different options of this or make maybe a half door on the bottom that you can just remove partial so you can kind of have you know the eat have your cake and eat it too kind of thing but whatever all right now looking at your bracket here you got two holes and then you got the two screws up here obviously those line up um mine did not come with instructions I, I don't care. This is like child's play anyway. Obviously, that 10 millimeter there is going to be where your bracket's at, so you're going to want this facing up. And if you pay close attention, you'll notice these holes are slotted. So you're going to want to leave these loose. I'm assuming, so on final install, you can move that around and get that set just the way you want it. So this is what you're going to want to do is tighten these down until they barely touch so you can slide this but it's not super loose because you're going to have to get behind this small space once everything is in there and tighten these back down all right looking ahead here 
All these clamps here, they're all 5.5 millimeters. If you own a Honda and you work on Hondas, get you a 5.5 millimeters. They're not 730 seconds or whatever 30 seconds garbage. These are 5.5 millimeter period. Now this clamp right here without a head, don't let that kick your ass. Look, you can get on there with just a regular pair of pliers. Loosen, loosen that dog right up. And then when you're done, you can do the same. You just tighten it right up. Don't let it beat you. So I'm looking at this too. Obviously, you're going to have to pull this up. You got two tens here you're going to have to take up. You're going to have to unplug your math. And then I'm looking. It's got this wiring harness, which you just pull on those. It's a lot easier two-handed, but this comes up. So it's got this plastic bit all the way around it. Which, like I said, I didn't get instructions, but it looks like this thing unclips. And if I had to guess, that's where this goes. You're going to put that in place so it doesn't look so terrible. That's my guess, and I'm sure that's what it is, so that's what I'm going to do. So that's pretty easy. Just get you a little flat blade. Get up in these clips and just pop all that off. And then you're just going to... Well, it's hard to do one-handed, but just pull that off. And now you've got all that bare wire that you're going to put that loom on. All right, got the loom all on there. And I was going to tape the ends like the factory would do to make it nice, but there's a small film of silicone on this loom. And I, my guess is maybe they were put together on the same table and they're handling the super oily filter, handling that. And that's probably what's on there. What I'm saying is your tape's not going to stick at all. Not even going to try, so don't even try. Waste of time. All right, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and loosen this clamp up. Come down, loosen this clamp up. And even though this clamp, you already loosened it up, you, you're not going to be able to pull this out because it's connected here and you've only got about that much room for wiggle and this damn thing's like that long. So don't worry about that. Just go ahead and loosen your two clamps. All right, so then you're going to grab this and you're going to pull and... Pop goes a weasel. No muss, no fuss, just pulls right out. Now you've got an option here. You can take these tens out. You can pull on this end. Get that out. Now you can get to these tens a lot easier. And then next is going to be your air box getting that out. All right, took those two tens out. And that just pulls right out. And then on this, it's got an o-ring on that and what you're going to do well, i'll show you that later we need to get this out next all right for the air box you got two tens two clamps here on the back and then you're going to have these little uh rubber dowels there's going to be actually four of them two on each side but to get this weather steel off weather stripping off there's these uh clips on the bottom and you don't just want to rip up on that there's a good chance you could rip your uh, seal so get you some kind of trim removal tool that's the best way to do it well wow, it came off way too easy yeah get out of there get 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 out of there it's a little harder on the rubber up here but she behaves. Throw that on your hot manifold over there. And you got your two tabs. And getting your air box off, it's gonna tilt it up. Like I said, you got these pins over here on the side, just a plastic tab and, and your rubber, and that's gonna take two hands to release those. All right, release those, air box out. You're gonna put that to the side because you gotta transfer your math. See how dirty our air filter was. Get out of there now. Yeah. Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. So now your lower box has to come out, which is gonna have obviously a 10 there. Looks like there's a 10 right here. Still got these two 10s, and this should pull out as a unit. 
All right, once you got your one, two, three, four tens out, that one's pretty deep, so you're gonna need a deep well. Um, after you get all those, they don't come, well, these two come out, these two just loosen up. They don't, they don't pull out because they're on the bushing still. Once you get them out, this won't pick straight up. You're gonna have to, the easiest thing is get your hand underneath and then really get a grip and force that up because, well, let me get it out here and show you. There's a bushing right here that fits over that nurple. And that's a good dry nurple and that's a good dry bushing. So you gotta force it up and over that. And I can guess that this is gonna be transferred, that's gonna be transferred, and these are gonna be transferred to the new box. Just looking at it, I don't know. So let's see. All right, so it looks like all you're gonna transfer is this rubber plug on the bottom, which, let me move this before I really regret what that does. I'm just gonna pop that out. And then you're gonna insert that with a little bit of, oh yeah, you know, and that's still a two-handed job. So anyway, you come over here and the other thing you're going to transfer is this bushing and it does help if you get get behind it and you kind of separate the bushing. Pull it apart. It's also a two-handed job. Then you can pull your, your screw out. That's basically what that bushing looks like except for this rubber is in the center of that. So now you can pull your rubber. Pink. So that rubber is gonna transfer to your bracket. And you got your screw. You're gonna take your the metal part of it, drop it in the top. And the screw is gonna go in the other way. Of course, that's not gonna hold itself in upside down. But you get the point. All right, so now you've got your bottom bushing on there that's going to go over that nurple right there. you got your top bushing on there. Go ahead and take your assembly, drop it down in the hole. Oh, by the way, if you're going to change your manual transmission fluid, it's kind of the same procedure. You take your stock air box out, and that right there is your fill bolt. Your drain bolt's on the bottom. That's how you're going to fill it. Anyway, let's drop this back in. Something like that. There you go. Now if you look down here, see if I can zoom in, you can see that, that nurple down there. You can see straight through so you know if you're lined up. So you just wanna snap it in. See these two holes line up, and now you can see that that you bolted that bracket on upside down, and you got to take that back off and flip it around, dumbass. You also want to make sure when you flip this bracket the right direction that you drop one of these screws. It goes somewhere under your bench and takes no less than forty minutes to find it. Make sure you do that. All right, one thing you can do to help you out is get you some silicone and spray just a little bit on every one of your fittings here. Now, typically to a turbocharged engine, you have to be really careful on where you put this silicone, but in this area from here to here, there is no boost at all, none. So you can do whatever you want to help you out to get all this together. So with that said, we've got the box in here, it's loose. You got this thing, you got four holes in this, you gotta find something to go on all of them. So then, that's where this bracket comes in. Bracket is gonna go into here. And then, that's gonna press into there and then screw together. And then you're gonna shoehorn all this stuff together. So let me go ahead and do that when I got two hands. 
Oh, don't forget your clamps. Now's a good time to just loosely throw all your clamps around this thing too. So the easiest way to get this on here, pop this end on, kind of start that, loosen your box up where it's, you know, your screws aren't started, nothing started. Push these two together. And then remember you got your, you got your little thing down there, you gotta line up. Once you line that up and you just push, it all just pops right in together with each other. Oh, and one thing before you push all this down and pop, 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 and it all kind of falls in together. I forgot you're going to want to bolt these two together, slide that in, and kind of get that sitting there ready to go too for when you press all that down. All right, so everything fit up here. Got all the clamps on and tight. All this stuff fit together pretty nice. No issues with it. Um, yeah, so now you're going to put your three bolts into this so this bracket back here remember i left it loose so you can slide that bracket and you got to line it up with this hole which you can't see but anyway you're going to slide that bolt in tighten it down tighten these two down next all right so this bolt back here in order to get that one to line up you need to actually put your hand here and pull kind of in a corner this way this way angle really hard to get that to line up um, prl could actually take and they could slot these a little bit more or they can manufacture this boss over this way maybe another 16th or an eighth of an inch that's about how much it's off but you're not just going to line that up you're really going to have to get after it but then after that, I mean, these two, they're lined right up. So I've had these tins left over this whole time. Well, I say tins, they're not. They're fives. Um, left over the whole time, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to use those. And then, so I try to run one of these stock bolts back into here. And whereas they will go down and kind of tighten down, now I see what these are. They don't really fit that great. So you're going to take these grommets going to pop them into those holes and then use their bolts so that's how that works all right so these aren't fives there's some other unobtainium size that i don't have t25 torx fits these okay just don't go ham on them you'll be fine all right now you're going to take your seal run that back in get in there just snap that in all the way around all right, now the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do, now you can do your MAF sensor. Now you could have done this first, but the less you bounce that around, the better. So that's gonna be two Phillips heads to take that out. And then uh, your new screws are some random Allen size that I don't have, so T15 fits those also. And there's your MAF. Now another thing that you can do, and I usually do it every time I replace my air filter, Get you some mass airflow sensor cleaner. Don't use anything else. And if you don't like this, go cry to somebody else's channel. So right in that hole right there, that opening, the rest of this is pretty much sealed up. You're just gonna yaw bitch that real good. Yaw bitch, just kill it. Blow that out, let it dry a minute. Throw her in and good to go. So keep in mind there is a seal around the bottom of this to so make sure it sticks to your MAF and not your old housing. In this hole here, you're gonna put that straight like that so the incoming air passes through that hole and that's how it gets its reading. So put your little screws in there. All right, so then got that screwed in. I was gonna go and plug this in and I'm like, What's, what's going on with this? Like, again, I don't have the instructions, but that's, that can't be right. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pass this through the underneath and come around, go underneath and up and into this. Because that, obviously that's not right. 
So yeah, that's what I did. I just ran it behind, under here, under, plugged it in. And it looks fine. So now you can plug all these back in. And I didn't have to unbolt this. I just reached my arm in there and then kind of grabbed it from the other side. It wasn't a big deal. These snap in nice, at least, all the way around, even in the PRL stuff. Uh, well, I think that's it. Don't think I forgot anything. I'm going to start it up, let it warm up, and uh, finish the video off with a test drive. And those videos may have been at the beginning of this video. I don't really know. Not really sure. Anyway, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Here is the entirety of your stock air box if you care to see any of that and kind of how that sits and might help you get it out a little easier. But yeah, that's it. Oh, what's up, Jeff? What's up, buddy? Where'd those instructions go? Not that I need them.